Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Simple Simon uh, mobile game tutorial series. So we've set up almost all of our game in action here. We've got our sequence playing, we've got sounds coming out. So we need a way for our player to have a kind of high score for them to challenge and try and beat every time they play the game. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of text at the top of our UI here. So we're going to go to Game Object, UI, Text. And then in this box, we're actually going to, first of all, we're going to drag it up to the top here. I'm going to make it the full width of the window. I'm going to make sure that this is anchored up the top so that it will always stay up there. So we're going to anchor it up there like that. And then finally, we're just going to make sure that this text is in the middle here. And um, we're going to make sure it is bright white so that it, it can be seen. So if we switch back to the game view, we can see it up there. I'm actually just move it down a tiny little, little bit there like that. There we go. And we're just going to fill it with some default text for the moment. So we're just going to say score. Um, we'll just say 99. And we'll put a little dash and we'll say high score. 99 as well. That'll just do for now. Okay. <clears throat> so we obviously need to update this text when our game is running. So what we're going to do is make a reference to it in our game manager script. So I just have that open here. So we need to make a reference to it here. And because we're using the Unity UI interface, we need to include that up at the top here. So we need to say using Unity Engine Engine.UI. So then down just at the bottom of all our other uh, variables here, we can just say public text uh, and we'll call it score text. So we'll just save that. And we'll go back and make sure that's all hooked up in here. So on our colors button, once that compiles, we'll get a little extra slot here. And we'll just drag our text box we just created and pop it in there like that. Okay, so now we're going to be able to make some changes to that um, using our script here. So obviously, in our when we start the game, we need to actually start as, uh, displaying some text. So we say, for example, our score text is equal to the first thing we want to do is say well if we're starting the game new of course our score is going to be zero so we can leave that as it is like that we'll put our dash in again we'll say high score like this on a space and then put our quotation mark at the end and what we want to use is player prefs which are our way of storing uh, data permanently between game sessions. So when our player stops playing the game, we'll actually be making sure that we keep a high score stored on the machine. So if we're going to use player prefs here, we'll obviously need to be able to know if there if that value exists in the world. So say for example, what we're going to do here is we're going to say plus player prefs dot get int, and we'll use a, a value called high score. So that's what we're going to use to store our number. But if we're starting the game for the very first time and we've never have and we haven't had a score before, they obviously won't know what to do here. So just before this, in our start function, we're just going to add a very simple if um, if not. So the following thing is going to be not true. So if player prefs is if player prefs dot has key uh, called high score so basically what we're saying here is look in the player press and if there's a value in there if there is if there's a value in here they're called high score by adding the not what we're saying if there isn't a value in there called high score so if we haven't already created that then what we need to do here is say okay we haven't already got that going so we need to add it in here so we can just say player press dot set int high score and we'll give it a starting value of zero so this way if this is the very first time the game is running it'll go okay is that high score uh, thing already here no it isn't okay well then in that case you need to set it to be zero so that we can put something into here okay so now that we know we have that uh, let's start keeping track of our score so basically we have it set to be zero at the start and the way we will uh, get a new score being reached is when the player is uh, inputting 
numbers. So once they get to the end of a sequence, then we know that that value that they just input can be uh, used to um, display on the screen. So what we can do is uh, write where uh, where we press where we get things correct here. Yeah. Uh, so down after all this stuff plays, basically, we can just add an extra little bit down here and say we can just say score text dot text is equal to uh, score and then a, a little uh, colon there we go I couldn't think of the word there so score plus so we're, we need to know what current score we're going to add up here so that we, our players keeping track of it so the score we're going to use is basically the position we're in in the sequence but uh, what we know is right here we're adding a new number to the sequence so rather than it just being our active sequence dot count because say for example say our, our sequence was four numbers long at this point because we are added a new number to the sequence and we're going on and playing the game our active sequence would actually be five so if we were to just add the count here we would be getting five so what we could do is uh, take away one from that or alternatively uh, and probably more straightforward would be to instead of putting it right at the end here we'll put it um, right at the start because it won't really matter too much our players will see it regardless uh, we'll see it kind of instantaneously anyway so we're adding our sequence count so that's the length of our active sequence uh, to our score and then what we're saying then is the, the rest of the kind of lines of text that we have uh, so we have a dash then we have high score like with colon there and like that and then we're again adding on the player prefs dot get int uh, high score which like we did before although we're typing off the screen here so that's not much use to us so they're like that um, but of course how are we actually setting a new high score for our game well, what we want to do is check if our current count is greater than what the currently stored high score is. So the way we can do that is just by saying if our active, oh no, I spelled that wrong altogether. If our active sequence dot count, if that is greater than our player prefs dot get int, uh, high score so if our currently if the current length of the active sequence is greater than whatever our high score is at the moment well if that's true then we need to set our current high score to be equal to whatever the active sequence count is so we can just say player prefs dot set int so we're setting the high score value and we're setting it to be our active sequence oh active sequence dot count and close that and put a semicolon and there you go that's the kind of that's how we'll set our new high score in the game but of course the one thing missing at the moment is what happens when we get to the end of or not when we get to the end but when we get our game wrong so we don't want to immediately punish the player by saying okay you got it wrong so your score is zero so we don't want to set it here that the that the score gets displayed as zero straight away so what we actually want to do is change it to be zero when we start a new game so back up here in our start game it doesn't we can put this one at the end because it doesn't really matter too much but here we're just going to say score text is equal to actually I'm not even going to bother writing this out because it's going to be the exact same code that we used up here because we know when we start a new game we want our score to be zero so in our start game we're just going to paste the exact same line in there with our high score being displayed the exact same way so we'll save this go back and oh we got a bit of an error here what's on line 41 oh this should be of course score text dot text so that means we have to do the exact same thing down here score text dot text 
you have to you have to remember that's what you're doing so we're talking about the text object basically so score text refers to the whole text object with all of these and uh, sorry not not with all these things but with all of this particular components parts so all of these things here and then we know we want to talk about the specific text box within it so that's why we say score text dot text okay so let's play the game we should see our score and our high score both go down to zero um oh well, i've got a high score of six because i was playing using the same values before but oh okay so i need to try and beat that so we see our score go up I'm not exactly full of talking because I'm trying to remember this pattern and I'm bound to forget. Um, but as you can see, our score is slowly increasing as we go. Hopefully I can manage to beat this six here. Um, but it's incrementing along the way just the way we want it to. And we should get a new high score here as long as I don't mess it up. Oh, I've already forgotten. <laughs> there we go. So there you go. You can see our high score is being updated along the way. So that's our game basically all working. We've got sound. We've got a high score system in place for our players. As you can see now, if we run the game again, our score will be back to zero because that's the way we want it to be every single time. And it all works perfectly and we're all happy. So there you go. That's the basics of our Simple Simon game in action. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.